We are very glad to have you here tonight at the 20-something Nathaniel Classic Christmas Eve Candlelight Service, and we're uh, just delighted that you chose to make us a part of your evening tonight. More importantly, I'm just really glad you made Jesus a part of your evening tonight. Amen. Just what an incredible thing, because he's a star. He's a star of the show tonight, so we're, we're just uh, we're glad that you're here to, to, uh, to incorporate Jesus in your, your, your evening. Let's pray. Lord, we love you tonight. As we just come into your house, we just want to tell you how much we... we uh, how much we want you to have a happy birthday, Lord. We just thank you for uh, coming to be, uh, walk among us and breathe our air and, and walk on our side and become human. Thank you, Father, for entering our world because we, we desperately needed you and, Father, we still need you. So I just pray, Lord, that uh, your presence would fill the room tonight. We just thank you so much for uh, bringing us here into your house this evening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, 
lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fear.
talk about two different types of light tonight. One's physical and the other one's spiritual. Uh, physical light's necessary to live. Uh, plants are obvious proof of that. They possess something what's called uh, positively uh, phototropic. It means that if you've ever seen a plant growing in your house, uh, leaning towards the light, going towards a window, it's drawn to the light. It chases after the light. That's what being uh, positively phototropic means. Without some type of light, plants die. Whether it's real light or artificial light, they, they wither up and they'll eventually cease to live. For, for a little while, plants will be okay without light, but they can't do it uh, for long term. Humanity, according to the University of California, humanity cannot live in darkness forever. We literally need light. So what light are you chasing? If you know what light your house plants are chasing, what light are you chasing after? I can tell you this, it's going to be whatever you value most in your life. It's going to be whatever you respond to most in your life because that will be the light you sense worthy to be leaning into. Now, if you want to know what your light is, I want to take you on a trail. If you want to know what your light is, at the end of a trail that you spend all your time and your affection and your money and your allegiance and your energy on, at the end of that trail is what the light that centers around your life is. I don't know what it is. I know that there are no shortages of lights out there in the world. People uh, chase after a light of success or promotion or the American dream or, or that woman or that man or this person or that person. But here's the thing. All of those are, 
are, are lights, they're artificial, I can, I can promise you this. All of those things that we try to keep going, they fail if we fail. If we don't keep making money, if we don't keep making bank, if we don't uh, keep making quota, if we don't keep our health, if we don't keep our faculties, if we don't keep her happy, if we don't keep him happy, then, then those lights go out. And, and y'all, if a light depends on you and me to rekindle it, it will go out. And I, I promise you, one of these days, every light that you and I have had anything to do with keeping kindled, it will go out. That means that one year you and I will have our last Christmas and our light will too go out. But what if I told you that, that every light that ends at your trail on this side of the grave determines where your trail ends on the next side of the grave? Whatever is at the end of your trail that you're pushing into, that you're leaning into right now, determines where you go afterwards. Because you either enter into a light of eternity or you enter into forever darkness. The Bible says, He, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The word that Jesus uses there is the Greek word phos. It's where we get our word photo. It means light. But the life that Jesus is talking about is a life that is connected to joy and life and peace. It's in Scripture. It's always connected to the presence and the power of God. But there's also a special element given to this word that Jesus says, I am the light. Uh, by the way, the word photography means to write with light. It's a beautiful word. But Jesus is saying, I am the light. It's a light that can't, that'll never go out. It'll, it's a light that never needs to be rekindled. It's a light that never needs to have its batteries charged. It's a light that never needs anything. It is a perpetual, ongoing light that never goes out. And he says, I am the light of the world. And when we think of world, we think of this precious little planet of ours. But when Jesus said it, he was talking about the sum total of the universe, including this place. So, y'all, if they find aliens somewhere out, in the other, out on the outer edges of the galaxy, you need to know something. Jesus is a light out there, too, okay? Uh, any other light we try to light our path with, they're not real lights. They're artificial lights. Jesus says he's the only light, the, the, the one, the, the one that never goes out, the light at eternity's edge, the, the only light that leads us out of this world into the other. And when Jesus becomes your light, the center of your life's orbit, this is what it begins to look like. It begins to look like you loving God, loving people, and living like Jesus. You see, church, the Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin or the, the wages of artificial light is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Y'all, God has given us the gift of real light. And this real light, He has His name. His name is Jesus. He is the star of tonight's show. The prophet Isaiah wrote, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the shadow of death, a light is dawn. Church, every year, every Christmas light reminds us. That the light of the world has come. Every Christmas candle reminds us that the light of the world has arrived. This light is the center of our worship for eternity in heaven. This light is the center of our worship tonight. Is he the center of your life tonight? Is he at the end of your trail? Is he the light that your life centers around? You see, following Jesus doesn't start by joining a church. Following Jesus doesn't start by taking a class or or filling out an application. It starts with the decision to place your faith in the love of God through Jesus Christ. I want to give you an opportunity to pull the trigger on that decision this evening. If every head will be bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your heart to Jesus tonight or to re-surrender your life to Him. And if you're interested in doing that, I encourage you to pray along with me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. You are the light of the of the world be the light of my world be my lord and savior forgive me of my sin and be my lord in jesus name and amen well you've said a prayer now what well you've made a decision to follow jesus now what well jesus said whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life so what do we do we follow him 
Now, following Him looks like that's where you put your time and your affection and your allegiance and your energy and your finances. It all goes to Jesus. It looks like that you would probably do this. You would probably get with a bunch of people who are just as messed up as you are, but they're doing everything they can to love God, love people, and live like Jesus. That's what following Jesus looks like. 1 John 1, 7 says this, But if we walk in the light, God Himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another. Y'all, God has not intended us to go on this spiritual journey by ourselves. He's built this thing to be a communal experience, uh, experience a community experience. Start 2022 by, by learning to walk in the light and experience a shared life with people just like you who are trying to walk in the light too. Now, you can't do what God wants you to do by yourself. He wants you plugged in somewhere. So, church, I, I encourage you. In 2022, come to three out of four weekends to a church every month. Three out of four. Come to a, a small group at a church. In fact, our church offers one on Wednesday evenings. It's called Connect Group. And I want to give you an opportunity to do something tonight. One of the most beautiful traditions of the church is a communal experience called communion. The Eucharist sacrament the ordinance of the lord's supper all depending on what your tradition is and we invite everyone tonight who's in a loving relationship with the light of the world to join us in the lord's supper this evening the elements don't save you what saved you already happened at calvary the communion tonight reminds you and reaffirms and strengthens the awareness of your life in christ so if you have your elements this evening brother don if you wouldn't mind just a little bit of light on the front just a little bit, buddy. You're doing a great job. Nope, nope, up here on the floods. Y'all, the bread reminds us that God became human. He breathed our air. He walked on our sod. Some received Him and some didn't. If you've received Him as the light of the world, this represents God in the flesh for us. Born that no man may die. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and pull out your piece of bread. Almighty God, tonight we give you thanks and blessing for the bread and for the cup. We thank you for what it means to us and what it does for us. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above that cometh down from the Father of lights. If you've trusted in Jesus as your Savior, you're trusting that his sacrifice on Calvary was for you. He paid for the gift of your salvation in units of his own blood. And when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, he didn't shed the blood of a martyr, and he wasn't shedding the blood of one man for another man. It was the very life of God being poured out for a sinful humanity. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians 1, 12 and 14, Always be thankful to the Father, who has made us fit to share all the wonderful things that belong to those who live in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom. And brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, who bought, us his, who bought us our freedom with his blood, and forgives us all our sins. So what light are you positively phototropic to tonight? Join us in 2022, because I want you to be leaning into Jesus. I encourage you to be leaning into Jesus. Our worship services are Saturday night at 5 and Sunday morning at 10.30. We would love to have you. We're starting a brand new project in January called 10 for 30. We would love to have you here. As, you near, as, we, end the, as we near the end of tonight's service, we'd like to do it the way we've done it here for the last 300 years. Miss Pam and I, we will, uh, we're going to light our candle, and then we're going to go down the center aisle, and we're going to light the, the lights on the center aisle. And when we light those, do us a favor and... Spread the light down the row. All right. Very good, Miss Schaefer. Thank you, hon. All right, Brother Don, you can kill those floods. Thank you, buddy.
coming to be God in the flesh. We thank you for taking on the challenge, Lord God, of, of becoming human. We couldn't get to you, so you came to us. We give you glory and we give you praise. Thank you for the gift of salvation that we find in your son, Jesus. And Jesus, happy birthday. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Drive home safely. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas.